thank you so much for attending this webinar and taking the time out to do so. It's good to see such a great turnout. I know that your time is precious and you've made a sacrifice to learn something new instead. So thank you and I promise to give you lots of quality content and knowledge in exchange. It's great to see so many um, of you on the webinar. I'm sure that all of you will have uh, lots to take away from it. So the main things uh, that I would like you to learn from this presentation. Why you will never be able to maximize how much you pocket from the sale of your home by either using any real estate agent or by selling privately. How to achieve a higher sale price than any real estate agent is incentivized to get for you without ever paying a commission or overpriced marketing fees. How to pocket up to $50,000 more than your neighbors from the sale of your home with a little known but simple and proven method and without doing it all yourself. And lastly, how to guarantee that you achieve the highest possible sale price for your home. And I hope that you get to take away much more than that, but uh, let's get straight into it. So the webinar will go for approximately 45 minutes with questions at the end. You're going to get some great content in this webinar and there is a lot to cover. So if you want to get the most out of it, please turn your phones to silent or go somewhere where you won't be disturbed and where there are no distractions. I'll ask you some rhetorical questions throughout the webinar. So please reflect on the answers for yourself, your own benefit. And the more you're engaged, the more you'll get out of this webinar. Now, I'm, I am going to challenge some of your beliefs about selling a home, so please be open-minded. They say that the mind is like a parachute and it only works when it's open. <laughs> Now, other than the great content I have to share with you, uh, I also have a special free gift for everyone who stays until the very end of the webinar, and I'll reveal this at the end. So, my story. That's my wife, Sophie, and I in front of the very first property we sold. Now, despite the smiles, it wasn't smooth sailing. Shortly before this photo was taken, we were looking at making a loss of around $20,000 on the house behind us. We both had corporate jobs. Sophie was working for an insurance broker and I worked in finance. But our true passion was always property. We had an investment property at the time but wanted to become more active with our investing. So we thought we'd start by renovating houses, as you do. We took a course and then started doing lots of research in our chosen areas or suburbs. And for six months, we spent every Saturday going to open homes and saw on average six homes each Saturday. I think our record was actually 13 open homes in, in one day. <laughs> now over this period, we met well over 100 real estate agents and we got a fantastic insight into the real estate sales industry. We got to see what they were doing and what they weren't doing what they were doing right and doing wrong, and what they should and shouldn't be doing. We ended up finding a house, and we bought well, uh, but we made many rookie mistakes and overcapitalized with the renovation. At the end, we were looking at making a loss of around fifteen to twenty thousand dollars if we were to sell in that in the traditional way using a real estate agent. So, out of desperation, we were forced to consider a private sale. The only reason we considered it and had the confidence to tackle it was because of our extensive experience with agents. It was a very sharp learning curve and we made many rookie mistakes here as well that we would never make now. And as a result of these typical private sale mistakes, we left a lot of money on the table. So we could have ended up with a much better result. But we did end up selling successfully and avoided a loss on the project. Now, after this experience, family and friends and their friends and family were asking us how we did it all. And uh, as we were helping them through the process of selling their homes, we fine-tuned our, our methods. More importantly, we were helping them pocket around $30,000 on average more than they could have with any real estate agent or even by selling it privately. So after our first renovation, we moved on to other strategies like flipping development sites and such, but we would never ever use a real estate agent and never let any of our family or friends make this mistake either. 
it was only after we helped to market a number of homes that we had a revelation or an epiphany. It was a huge aha moment for us when the penny really dropped. I'll tell you what this was in a moment, but first, let me ask you three things. Remember back to the time when you bought the home you are now living in. What, was, what were the reasons that you bought that particular home? Was it because of the location and being close to family or work? Was it because it had the right number of bedrooms and bathrooms? Was it simply because you could just imagine yourself and your family living there? Or, or was it because it was what you could afford at the time? What did the real estate agent who you bought from have to do with your decision to purchase that home? Did the agent have any impact on your decision to buy? Now I'm going to ask you a six billion dollar question. Did you buy your home or was it sold to you? Just think about it for a minute. Did the agent say anything to convince you to buy the home or did the agent talk you into it? If you bought the home and the agent didn't sell it to you, what makes you think that only an agent can sell it for you? The reason why this is a $6 billion question is because the real estate sales industry in Australia is a $6 billion industry annually. So our big aha moment. Um, of all the houses that we marketed ourselves, or helped to market for others, we didn't sell any of them. They were all bought. We realized that a home cannot be sold, whether by you, me, or a real estate agent. It can only be bought. And this is not just a case of semantics. This distinction is hugely important to understand because when you do, you will think differently about how to approach the process and realize that you don't need to engage a so-called seller of properties otherwise known as a real estate agent for this. There is a formula that leads a buyer to buy your home and I will explain this shortly. Now do you think real estate agents go back to the drawing board and reinvent the wheel every time they list a property for sale? Of course not. They follow a process or a formula with some tweaks for each home and homeowner. The only thing that differentiates a good real estate agent from a bad one is the extent to which they follow this formula. Now unfortunately, very few of them follow it, and even the ones that do charge way more than anyone should ever pay, and certainly more than their efforts and results justify. Now people mistakenly believe that because a real estate agent is usually involved in the process, they are the reason or the cause of the sale. This is simply not true. It is a misconception and a false belief. There are many other false beliefs or misconceptions that we have adopted about real estate agents over many decades and generations as a society. I'm going to ask you another question. Why do you think most people engage a real estate agent? As I mentioned briefly, there are a number of misconceptions, false beliefs and, and myths that people believe. Firstly, most people think that real estate agents sell homes but we have established that they don't. They actually sell two things. Firstly, themselves to get the listing, and secondly, overpriced marketing packages. Unfortunately, people believe that only an agent can negotiate and achieve the highest price. Well, let me ask you this. Are all good negotiators real estate agents? Of course not. So if you want someone to help you with negotiations when selling your home, does it necessarily have to be a real estate agent? No. Good negotiators are good in any kind of negotiation situation, not just when selling a home. Wouldn't it be cheaper to have a good negotiator in your corner who is not a real estate agent? Of course it would. On the flip side, do you think that all real estate agents are good negotiators? <laughs> I think we all know the answer to that one. Of course not. Firstly, in the four-day course they take to become licensed agents, they are not taught any negotiation skills at all. Secondly, they actually have a disincentive to negotiate the highest price for you. Most people believe that a real estate commission gives the agent a strong reason 
to achieve the highest possible sale price, but nothing could be further from the truth. The theory is that the higher the sale price, the more commission an agent receives, right? Now at 2.5% commission, a real estate agent would receive an additional $250 by fighting for an extra $10,000 for you. The individual agent would actually receive $125 extra because about half their commission goes to the agency. Now do you think that an additional $125 is a strong incentive for an agent to negotiate hard and risk losing the sale and the commission? Let me put it another way. If the agent found a buyer for $10,000 less than what you expected, um, then, it would, then it would only cost the agent $125 to convince you to accept the lower offer for a quicker sale. This way, the agent could pocket their $15,000 to $20,000 commission sooner. The bottom line is, real estate agents have an incentive to get a quick sale, not a high price. If you want a great negotiator in your corner, the worst thing you can do is to engage a real estate agent. Now, people think that because a certain agent is the local area expert, they know the market and can achieve a better price. <laughs> Now, you'd be surprised how many agents don't know or care about the value of your home. They simply don't invest the time in doing the thorough research, which is the only way to find the evidence to establish a market value. There is no way around doing this research. There is no short, shortcut. Even an active local real estate agent won't sell every home in a given suburb. So if they are only relying on their own sales data, it is simply not enough. Many of them should and do know the value values in their local area, but knowing the market doesn't mean that they will achieve the highest price for you, as I mentioned above. If there is no incentive for them to achieve the highest sale price, it doesn't matter how well they know the local area. Besides, with access to the right tools and databases such as RP Data and others, it isn't difficult to become a local area expert in any suburb within a matter of a few hours. We've helped people as far as Adelaide uh, to achieve top dollar for their home. The reason why real estate agents want to be known as the local area experts is because they have no choice but to be local. When they're holding three or four open homes each Saturday, they need to stick to a small geographical area because they physically can't cover a greater distance. Another myth people believe is that agents find a buyer at an open home. So most people think that open homes are the best way to show your home. Now, open homes are how agents traditionally prospected for their next customer. They've always asked buyers if they need to sell before they can buy, and this is a great way to find their next client. This is actually one of the reasons why they send you away for an hour. They don't want you to see them looking for the next customer in your own home. People don't decide to buy at an open home because of the agent, but because of the presentation of the home. This is why many large agencies actually send their juniors to hold the opens. They know that you can't say anything to sell somebody a home. So the junior simply opens the door, takes down the names and contact details, then gives everyone a brochure. That's it. Open homes are one of the few opportunities for the agent to be seen to be putting effort into the campaign, despite the fact that opening the door is the easiest step in the entire marketing process. They do this with great fanfare, <laughs> so that you can see them placing the open home sign, putting out a flag, bringing their briefcase, laying out the brochures. Remember, they can't say anything to convince anyone to buy. Open homes attract mostly sticky beaks and tire kickers. These may be your neighbours, people from up and down the street, or those who happen to be in the area at the time. Now, these people have no intention of buying your home, certainly most of them. But what they say within earshot of a potential buyer can be devastating. The last thing you want is a tire kicker talking about any potential negative aspect of your home with an earshot of a potential buyer who has actually fallen in love with the house and would not have noticed that negative thing. Because let's face it, there's, there are negative things about all homes. It's only a matter of perspective. When there are 15 or 10, 15, 20 people at an open home, it becomes more difficult to pick the truly interested parties, especially if they're keeping their cards close to their chest and not giving many signals. Now, theft is not an uncommon, uncommon occurrence at Opens, and no agent will ever talk about this. Forget about jewellery and such. 
I've heard property stylists or stages complain that they've had pieces of smaller furniture go missing at an open. Oh, I couldn't believe it when I heard it. On the flip side, a poorly attended open home where only one person turns up at a time can actually encourage them to beat you down on the price due to the lack of perceived competition and buyer inquiry. And this does happen from time to time when only one person rocks up. Um, it's not a good look. There is a flexibility with an open home for those, sorry, there is a lack of flexibility with an open home for those who cannot make it. It doesn't matter how early an open home is advertised, there will always be people who cannot make that time for whatever reason, whether it is due to their kids playing a sport or whatever. When these people call the agent to ask for an alternative time, often the agent will tell them to come back a week later um, to the next open. Now this is terrible as you could lose a potential buy this way. And I've heard of this happening several, several times, many times. Now, open homes suit the agent, as it is easier and less time consuming to hold one open a week, rather than actually go back several times a week to show one person through. Even if, um, for that one person, it may have been the best and possibly only time they can see it before moving on to the next home. You can't let an opportunity like that pass. Open homes don't necessarily create competition for your home. Um, most people think this is the case. Not true. Even if there is a crowd, everybody knows that most people are sticky beaks and won't feel pressured to buy just because they see others there. Most importantly, 95% of the marketing has actually been done before the first inspection, before the door is ever opened. This is what makes the difference to the success of your campaign more than anything else. If it has been done right, it doesn't matter who opens the door. If it has been done poorly, it doesn't matter who opens the door. It's not going to save the campaign. Open homes are inefficient, ineffective, and benefit only the agent. Inspections by appointment are far better because the people who ask for an appointment to see your home are not tie kickers and are far more qualified. Now, most people believe that Real estate agents have a unique and valuable database of buyers, which can be readily tapped to find your ideal buyer. Now, <laughs> just have a think, how is this database created? All right, well, when people leave their details at an open home, they often go onto this database. You can imagine the quality of this database considering most people are tire kickers at an open home. Buyers look at many homes and talk to several agents <laughs> when looking for a home in any area. So they can be on the so-called database of several agents. For this exact reason, no agent can claim to have a totally unique database. Now also, most people on such a database aren't just sitting at home by the phone <laughs> waiting for an agent to call them about a property, right? They're looking online, like everyone does these days. When people on a database finally do buy a home, do you think that they will call every agent whose database they're on to ask them to remove them? Of course not. Most people on a so-called agent's database have either bought something already, are looking online, or are on the database of several real estate agents. You can see then how little value such a database offers um, a seller. Now let's assume that a real estate agent did have a totally unique database of buyers. Not all of them are looking for a home like yours even if it was someone who recently missed out on a home in your neighborhood. It could have been a completely incomparable home. Would you not want your property to have a greater exposure to more people than just the one or two who the agent thinks would be interested in your home? Of course you would. The more people that are aware of your property, the greater the chance of finding the one who will actually fall in love with it and then pay top dollar. You can only achieve this exposure by being online via realestate.com.au and domain. Please don't fall for the database of buyers myth. Unfortunately, most people believe that agents make the process convenient and they take care of everything. The simple fact is that selling your home is not convenient and agents don't do most of the things that would actually make the process convenient. You still need to take care of any repairs or touch-ups or coordinate someone else to do it for you. You need to declutter or organize someone to help you with it. You need to keep the home tidy and, and presentable throughout the entire campaign and make sure it looks as close as possible at least to a display home. You need to pack up and leave for each open home and then clean up after 20 people have trampled through your, your home. You still need to negotiate 
except you're doing it through your agent. And you still need to complete paperwork and contracts. So if you are hoping for convenience from a real estate agent when selling your home, you're deluding yourself. The fact is, you should always be involved in the process of marketing your home anyway, because nobody will have your best interest at heart as much as you. Please don't fool yourself by believing otherwise. If you want to completely outsource the process and go for maximum convenience, it will be the most expensive perceived convenience you ever pay for. Not just because of the exorbitant cost of commissions and marketing fees, but more importantly, a compromised sale price. A few people think of it in these terms, but a real estate commission of $15,000 translates to approximately $1,000 per hour. This is based on our experience on how much time the process requires on average. So if we've been using real estate agents for the wrong reasons and they don't sell homes because a home can't be sold as we've um, established, then what does make someone want to buy a home? Well, there's a formula or a process which can be applied to lead someone to want to buy a home and pay top dollar. This formula does, does not care who follows it or how much you pay for it. It consists of five components. Preparation, presentation, pricing, promotion, and negotiation. This formula is about identifying, targeting, attracting, and then enticing your ideal buyer and making them feel compelled to pay top dollar. Now what do you want to achieve most when selling your home? It is different for different people. Some people want only the highest sell price, understandably. <laughs> Others want the quickest possible sale, while some may value convenience above everything else. So how do you define the result you want to achieve? For me personally, it has always been to maximize how much I pocket from the sale. You will not be able to achieve this with either a real estate agent or a private sale. A very few number of conscientious real estate agents may be able to help you achieve the highest sale price, but their commission and marketing fees will make this totally pointless. You may end up saving on commissions and marketing fees by selling privately, but what is the point in saving $15,000 if you end up selling for $30,000 less than what you could have if you knew the formula and how to follow it. You can only maximize how much you pocket by achieving the highest sale price while also avoiding commissions and keeping the marketing costs to an effective minimum. So if we shouldn't use a real estate agent or attempt to sell privately, what is the solution? Well, it's called the assisted private sale. It is very important to have expert assistance and guidance with the process of selling your home. I think we can all agree to that, but after all, most of us, for most of us, this is something we only do a couple of, couple or maybe a few times in our life. Now this guidance, this expert guidance, doesn't have to come from a real estate agent. It can come from anyone who has been through the process many, many times before. So what are the benefits of an assisted private sale? Well, you pay for a result, not just a service. So you don't pay for an assisted private sale if you're not happy with your sale price at the end, and that's a guarantee. If you're happy with the sale price, you only pay the assisted private sale fee at the very end after your home has sold. You achieve a higher sale price than you would with an agent for two reasons. Firstly, we know many clever ways to increase the value of your home, most of which cost surprisingly little. This is both through simple improvements and presentation techniques. Secondly, we're actually incentivized to help you achieve the highest possible sale price with the above mentioned guarantee that I spoke about before. Now you can pocket up to $50,000 more than you could with any real estate agent from the combination of achieving the highest sale price without paying a commission. And at the end, you experience a feeling of immense triumph, empowerment and satisfaction from achieving a better result than any of your neighbours. I cannot describe to you how good this feels. Now, 
how does the assisted private sale method work? So firstly, we inspect your home and prepare a thorough property and market analysis. Now this is similar in detail to what a valuer would do. We show you comprehensive evidence of recent comparable sales with detailed images of kitchens, bathrooms, living rooms, uh, outdoor areas. And this will give you a very clear idea of the price range you can expect to sell in before and after any potential improvements. This is much more comprehensive than any appraisal from any real estate agent. I think most of us know that when real estate agents appraise our home, they have a hidden agenda. With this property analysis that I mentioned, we also give you clever tips on how to increase the sale price of your home and how to present it to achieve the biggest impact. Now we only recommend improvements if needed, which generally achieve a return of around $3 for every dollar spent. Now these suggestions alone could add tens of thousands of dollars to your sale price. We recommend that you consider every dollar you spend on the marketing of your home as an investment that must bring a good return. I don't believe a real estate agent's commission brings a return on the investment. Now we recommend the best way to pitch the price of your property so that you attract only qualified and serious buyers without being misleading. It will tell your buyers if the home is within their budget. It will tell them, um, without being too specific, what price range they should expect to pay, allowing them to pay top dollar if they actually fall in love with it. We coordinate any necessary professionals, photographers, stylists, etc., and you pay cost price. There is no markup. We craft an engaging advertising copy to attract your ideal buyers. And we coordinate the launch of your ad online so that your home has exposure on realestate.com.au and domain. You also get this at the wholesale rates. So we organize a street sign when appropriate and make sure that it is advertising your home and not my face. Now we strongly recommend against open homes. As I said before, and instead suggest that inspections by appointment be held. This helps to flush out only the most qualified and strongest prospects and saves time and effort. People who send an email or call to see your call to see your home are much more qualified than the random tie kickers who rock up at an open home. You should always schedule inspections directly to save time and effort. Imagine the inefficiency of having a third party trying to schedule a time that was suitable for you and your prospect. It would take a number of emails or calls back and forward before a mutually suitable time was, was actually found. We know of people who missed out on buyers because their agent was too busy and simply forgot to get back to the buyer. When you're scheduling an inspection, you only need to worry about one property, which is your home, and one buyer at a time. 80 to 90% of inquiries will be by email, and most of these will simply be to confirm a time to inspect your home. The remaining questions will be simply specific to your home and ones that only you are likely to know the answers to. We recommend, we recommend ways to most uh, efficiently schedule inspections to save you time and generate much more interest in your property. You should always open the door for prospects yourself. You're simply inviting them in and giving them an opportunity to look around. This is no different to you letting in a tradesperson, consultant or someone you only recently met. We give you tips on what things to point out and a few questions to ask. These are not critical to the success of your campaign, so you needn't worry if you're not comfortable in, in talking with people. Remember, there is nothing you can say to sell your home. And, you, and don't worry, you will not be negotiating with anybody during or after the inspections. We very strongly discourage it. There's another way. We can do a debrief after each inspection to help you interpret the seriousness of each prospect. We provide you with brochures of carefully selected recent comparable sales that will help to influence your buyer's price expectations. In your favour, of course. Now we help you with the contract as well. Um, we give you a copy of the standard REIQ or Real Estate Institute of Queensland contract and assist with its completion. These can be given to anyone who wishes to make an offer and all offers must be lodged using one of these contracts. 
not only do you not have to negotiate with anyone during the inspections, you don't ever need to engage in verbal negotiations with anyone at any stage. We have proven techniques to elicit the highest possible offer from any serious buyer and we share these with you in tailored, done-for-you written responses. Now you can simply forward these to your buyer in a reply email. It's a matter of cut and paste. Simple as that. We strategize with you after each offer and response from buyers to formulate the best possible reply. Again, we write these all out for you. Our negotiation tactics and responses alone are worth the fee that we charge. These exact tactics have actually helped us recently to increase the sale price of a home by $120,000. The initial offer was $800,000, which was already more than local agents were telling our client that he could achieve. The home sold for $920,000. We can help offer advice about what to look for in a legal professional who will be doing your conveyancing. We can even recommend someone we use ourselves. We know that you shouldn't pop the champagne until the money is actually in the bank. Anything can happen between when the contract is signed and settlement. The buyer's finance could be declined, for example. A buyer could have an issue with the results of a building and pest report. We know to expect the unexpected and have been through it all before many, many times. We help to effectively overcome any obstacle that can arise and, and support you in navigating this very emotional roller coaster to make sure that you keep a level head. We're available seven days a week and outside of business hours through the entire process from start to finish. We know that most of the action happens during these times. This is when most working people have time, both buyers and sellers. Now, the before and after photos you see here are of a one bedroom unit we marketed recently in Green Slopes, uh, which is about five kilometers from the Brisbane CBD. This property was um, actually featured as a four page case study in the uh, January edition of your investment property magazine. It's an interesting example of the comparison of results that can be achieved with an assisted private sale as opposed to a traditional real estate agent. Now the unit next door to this one was the mirror image of this unit and they even shared a wall. That unit was the mirror image of this unit before some simple cosmetic renovations were carried out. Now the person who sold the other unit paid around $10,000 in commissions and, and marketing fees to an agent who sold the unit for $260,000. That person pocketed around $250,000 from, from the sale. The unit that we marketed, that you can see here, sold for $290,000 after a quick cosmetic renovation that cost $8,300. The owner pocketed roughly $276,000 after all the costs. Now the difference between how much the owners of the two units pocketed was about $26,000. And this was on, on a simple one bedroom unit. Now imagine what could be achieved with a three bedroom house. Now having said this, not all homes need the kind of renovations that we carried out on this unit. This one, <laughs> this was another great result for previous clients in Kenmore, uh, just southwest of Brisbane. Mark and Sarah pocketed around $25,000 more than they could have with the very best local real estate agent. And the sale price actually exceeded their expectations. And because of our marketing strategy, they found a buyer in 16 days. Ah, uh -huh, Susanna. Susanna also achieved a fantastic result. She sold this home in Eight Mile Plains, just south of Brisbane, and found a buyer within 14 days. Her price expectations were also exceeded, but the um, only important thing that mattered was how much more she pocketed from the sale. And this was almost $20,000 more than she could have with any real estate agent in the area. Uh, the story of Kelly and Grant, this was an interesting one. They wanted to sell their family home in Adelaide to move back to Brisbane. Uh, now we helped them find a buyer who met their price expectations and we did all this from Brisbane in collaboration with Kelly and Grant. Now actually for most of the campaign, Grant was already in Brisbane. Um, so we were working with, uh, with Kelly mostly, who was also looking after three children by herself. Now if she can do this, anybody can. 
we helped them pocket over $13,000 more than they could have with any local agent, but this wasn't the best part. Now with the help of that $13,000, they had enough deposit to buy their Brisbane home without having to pay lenders mortgage insurance. Now this saved them a further 15,000, which brought their total savings to 28,000. And in Grant's own words, it's quite remarkable. Now Fiona and Craig, they were also very happy with their sale. They achieved their desired outcome with very little stress or effort and pocketed almost $17,000 more than they could have by selling with any other agent. Now if you are thinking of selling your home anytime this year, I do invite you to take advantage of our unique service. Even if you're months away from putting your home on the market, you can never start preparing too early. The last thing you want to do is leave critical steps to the last minute. This service is only suitable for those people who, for whom pocketing somewhere between ten to fifty thousand dollars more from the sale of the home is the most important goal. Having said this, we can only work with a limited number of people at a time to ensure that we provide the highest level of service and attention. For this reason, and because of our strong guarantee, we have to make sure that you qualify and that we're a good fit to work together. If you do qualify, we can hold a spot for you at or around the time that you would like to sell. The, qualif the qualification process involves a thorough analysis of your property and, and market research, which I mentioned earlier in the presentation. This can take around two or three hours. Now this is often more in depth than what a value would do, as I mentioned, and I think value is charged around $500 for something like this. We share the results of this with you in great detail so that you can get a very, very clear understanding uh, of what you can expect your home to sell for. If you're thinking of selling your home, I encourage you to express your interest now. If you would like to find out if you qualify and would like us to hold a spot for you, we ask that you reserve your spot with a simple $97 uh, commitment. Now this will tell us that you're serious. If you don't qualify, we will refund this amount in full. If we didn't charge this relatively small amount, then we would have everybody wanting us to do a free analysis of their property and it would take us away from those who are serious about selling their home. I'm sure you agree that this wouldn't be fair. If you do qualify, the $97 reservation will form part of the, the final amount that you pay at the very end. So you pay the balance of our fee, excluding that $97. Remember though, that if you don't achieve a sale price that you're happy with, then you don't pay and, you'll also, and you will also get your $97 back. So there's absolutely no risk for you. And you can express your interest by going to the link that you can see at the bottom of your screen now. So on that page, you will see a button that you can click to confirm your intention to, to reserve your spot. We will then be in touch to finalize the rest. Now before I take questions, I promised at the beginning of the webinar that I have a free gift to give to everyone who stayed to the end. So this is this gift, <laughs> it's an electronic copy of the book I wrote, um, which was published last year. Uh, it's appropriately titled, Real Estate Agents Don't Sell Homes, and I'm sure you're not surprised by that title now. <laughs> now it's available on Amazon, um, but in the book I bust all the myths on which the real estate sales industry has been built, and the reasons why nobody should ever sell with either a real estate agent or privately. It, it details the philosophy, behind our unique approach to helping people maximize how much they pocket from the sale of their home. Now I will email this to you within a day or two of the webinar. So that concludes me talking and um, I'll throw it open to, uh, to questions now and um, Jam if you wouldn't mind um, assisting me with this I'd truly appreciate it. Sure, and thank you, David. Um, I've been taking down notes myself. Interesting information. <laughs> All right, for the people in the room, all you have to do is just type in your questions, and while you were doing your presentation, David, we do have a few questions um, from the audience, but if there are more, please type in it into your chat box, and um, we'll definitely ask David. Now, first one here, David, is how much do you charge for your service? Uh, yes, of course, very important question. So our fee is 5500 but as I said, this is only payable at the end and only if you're happy with your sale price. So this is the guarantee that we offer. 
So our negotiation strategies alone can help you pocket many times more than what we charge. So like in the early example, where we helped a, a recent client achieve a sale price that was $120,000 higher than the initial offer. Now obviously we can't always help to entice an extra $120,000 from every buyer, it'd be nice, but even a fraction of this would easily justify our fee. Now our tips and tricks alone, which improve the presentation of your home and, and uh, can increase its sale price by tens of thousands of dollars are worth the fee that we charge. We're strongly against real estate commissions as, as, um, as well as exorbitant marketing fees. Nobody should be paying any more than about $180 for professional photography and about $240 for the largest street sign. Um, and somewhere between $250 and $500 for the online advertising, which actually gets you exposure on realestate.com.au and domain. So we get these at either wholesale or cost price, and we just pass these straight on to you. Awesome, okay, mm -hmm. now we have another question coming in. Hold on, let me just check here. Okay, so David, are you real estate agents? Absolutely not. And I refuse to be associated with that profession and, and industry. We call ourselves property marketing strategists and we don't need a real estate agent license to guide people through an assisted private sale. Mind you, there isn't much value to a real estate agent license. In Queensland especially, anybody could get their license within about four days at a cost of around $600. Despite being a highly regulated industry, the standards that are set uh, are extremely low and give false comfort to people who trust in a real estate agent license or, or registration. This license isn't worth the paper it's printed on and frankly, it scares me that there are people out there with this piece of paper but no experience and minimal training who call themselves real estate agents and fumble their way through the sale of people's most valuable assets. It, it just infuriates me. Gotcha. Okay, and I think this is just one of the last questions. I don't see any more. Mm -hmm. um, it says, does it not look unprofessional if I show my buyers my own, I'm sorry, if I show my buyers, mm -hmm. uh, potential buyers, my own home? Uh, absolutely not. So people who want to see your home come because of the home, not because of you. <laughs> it is irrelevant how professional you or any agent appears. If the house is not presented well or doesn't satisfy the buyer's criteria, it they won't buy it. <laughs> buyers don't care who opens the door, as long as they are able to look around and decide for themselves whether they would like to buy the house or not. They don't make that decision because of you. They make it based on how the home is presented and priced. So over the many years that we've been in the property market, we have seen countless poorly presented real estate agents. We actually even bought our very first home from such an agent and I clearly remember that I would have looked probably more professionally in my pyjamas than that guy did, uh, but it didn't matter because he happened to be opening the door to a property which ticked all our boxes, so so we ended up buying. So I hope that answer, <laughs> answers the questions. Uh, thank you for asking them, Jam. Appreciate your help with that. No problem. Right. Well, before we close the webinar and the webinar, is there any other um, like takeaway for the audience um, for them to remember? If there's one thing that you have to remember about this webinar, what would that be? Look, probably um, something you've been seeing at the top of your screens all evening, which is trust the process, not an agent, because there is a process that leads to uh, somebody wanting to purchase your home. And that's what you want to achieve. You want to achieve that want, because when you do, you will elicit a much higher sale price. Now to have this process working for you, as I said, it doesn't matter who follows it and it doesn't matter how much you pay for it and you certainly don't have to pay what people have been charged for decades and generations. So please remember this um, as something you can take away from tonight's webinar. So thank you everyone for, for joining in. I really appreciate you taking the time out and I hope you've learned something valuable tonight.